Hello, welcome to day seven of React Holiday 2018. Uh, I applaud your stamina. I can't believe we've made it this far. It's been seven days. Uh, we got another two plus weeks to go. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you are too. If you were following all along yesterday and uh, you were using a browser other than Safari, which I was using randomly for whatever reason, you might have been seeing this uh, type error. Now, I apologize for kind of creating this app in such a way that it didn't work across the browsers. Um, it seems to me like this is an error that is getting surfaced by Code Sandbox, saying that the fetch failed. Um, and this is one of the kind of, uh, kind of dis advantages of using an environment like this. Um, I don't know how those errors get surfaced differently in different browsers or what. Anyway, if you close this, you should see the same thing that we had before. I, again, I'm very sorry that you had a different experience yesterday. However, uh, we're going to get out of that state. We're going to start requesting real data again. Um, so hopefully we won't have that problem. Again, very sorry. What I want to do today is I want to introduce our first hook. Um, and hooks are amazing. I'm sure at this point you've heard a lot of the hype about them. And uh, I want to start with the use state hook. Um, it's the easiest one, I think, in my opinion. Some of the other ones get a little bit uh, a little bit complicated. So we're going to start with use state to just get our hands hands wet with um, with hooks. And we're going to use it to track the currently selected Pokemon. So eventually this is going to be a list and uh, you can select and see the profile for a Pokemon. Um, and in order to do that, we need to keep the selection that we've made um, so that we can kind of show the right Pokemon. What you need to know about hooks, so we've uh, again forked uh, this from day six, we're on day seven now. Um, you need to make sure that we you are on 16.7.0-alpha some number. Now this project is set up with it, but if you're setting up a project on your own, if you're using Create React app, or you have your own type of setup, like you need to be on this version or nothing that I'm gonna show you with hooks is going to work. That'll be very frustrating for you. So, caveat. Let's dive in. So the first thing is we need to figure out a place to hold our state. And uh, I think that the app level makes sense for that. So we have um, we have this whole like error boundary suspense Pokemon list. Um, so I think that it would make sense to uh, just have that state live in this app level. And what we'll do is we'll put um, kind of a big bold text here that says um, selected Pokemon ID, and uh, right now we'll just say one, okay? Not totally sure why I keep having to reload this sandbox, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, and again, this is gonna be uh, day seven, so that's cool. The next step is that we wanna make this dynamic, and we're gonna use use state for that. So let's um, open up the React JS docs and um, search for use state. All of the hooks have this use prefix um, by uh, whatever. It's the it's the standard. A hook should have the word lowercase word use in front of it, camel cased. So, what does the use state hook look like? Well, so you call use state as a function and you give it an initial value. In our case, we're starting our uh, our journey through Pokemon at one, uh, so we'll give it just a fixed to number one. Now, when use state is called with this initial value, it returns an array. So, if we just took that array and we called that, you know, Pokemon, uh, or you know, Pokemon selection or Pokemon ID or or whatever, we would have an array with two values in it. At the first position, it would be the, the current state of that thing. Um, at first render, it'll be the initial state. And then a an updater function that called, now, <laughs> sorry, I got a little tongue tied, but we'd have an updater function. Now that updater function 
uh, is going to, you can call it with a new ID, and in our case, and update the ID. And then this number, this value updates. Now it doesn't have to be a number. If you wanted to you know, put a string text in here, or you wanted to put an object or an array or whatever in there, um, that's all fine. It's gonna come in at this first position. Now, if you, if you just took this as a value and didn't do this destructuring assignment to it, um, you would have to access those via position. So you would say Pokemon of, of zero would be the, the current count and or the current ID, and then Pokemon of one would be the updater function. And that's kind of a weird way to use this API. However, it is really handy when you combine it with destructuring assignment, because you can say, I know this is an array, and for the first value, I want to refer to that as, in this case, state, and I want to take the second value, which is the update function, and refer to that as set state. In our case, this would be Pokemon ID and, or yeah, Pokemon, selected Pokemon ID and um, set selected Pokemon ID. So that's that's how that works. Um, let's uh, let's dive in and write that. So I know it's all a little bit confusing. It's it's actually not a syntax that I've seen um, other languages use for this type of thing. So um, it it might feel a little bit weird at first, but I think you'll you'll get the hang of it. So first of all, um, we are going to call React dot use state, and we're going to give it that initial value that we were using here of one. Now, how do we use it? We need to assign it somewhere. So we're going to uh, say let, um, and we're gonna use again our array destructuring assignment because we know that this function returns an array. The first value is going to be our, um, let's see, selected ID. Let's, let's be verbose. So selected Pokemon ID, uh, which means that we can now change this to selected Pokemon ID. It should still be one. Now, if we change this to 10, uh, that should also update. I think my, I think my computer is just churning because I'm recording a video. So it's, it's just a little behind. Yeah. So 10. Great. So let's change that back to one. Now for the magic, the second argument in this, is um, going to be that update function. So the update function we will call set selected Pokemon ID. Easy as that. Now let's use it. We have a Pokemon list, right? And um, that list controls the whole list. So we, we'd like to give it a function. Uh, I'm gonna call it on select. Um, and we will call this anytime any of these items gets clicked. So what I'd like to happen is I'd like to give it a function which takes an ID and then calls this function that we've decided to find here to update the state with it, okay? So we have, um, when something's clicked, we're going to call a function with an ID and, uh, and call this function here with that ID, which is going to do the do all the hooks business, which we don't have a whole lot of time to discuss today, but do all the hooks business and uh, update this value here. So this is looking good. This is the API I want, but it's not implemented yet. So let's jump to Pokemon list. Uh, where is that? Pokemon list, okay. So right now we're not taking any props, so let's fix that. Um, we know that props is an object, and the one that I'm interested in is this function called onSelect. Okay. We're then going to say every time one of these is clicked, so on click, we want to call a function that calls on select, and we are going to use the Pokemon. Um, let's see. We have to call it with a Pokemon ID. So unfortunately, so this is this is a little bit of a problem. This is where we, we get into problems. This API does not have an ID. I'm gonna prove that to you. So we go into this list and well, crap, we have name and we have a URL. 
Why there's no ID, I'm not totally sure, but it's a free API, so I'm not gonna complain. However, we do see that there is an ID, it's just not a, a property on these objects. So we can get that. So um, it takes a little bit of a little bit of hackiness, but we're gonna we're gonna do it and we'll we'll clean it up later. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six slashes until the ID. So we are going to just kind of do some some JavaScript nastiness to to get a workable ID. Um, so since we don't have an ID, we're going to use the URL. We're going to call split um, on slashes and use the sixth value um, in that array. I know, I I know, I know. We'll make it better, I promise. Um, but for right now, I just want to get it working and then we'll fix it. So let's save that. And now when I click these, hold on, reload. Now when I click these, nothing happens. Uh, now when I click these, it will update the ID. So just a recap. We have, um, we are now using uh, use state. We are starting with an initial value of one, which we use to structuring assignment to um, name selected Pokemon ID, that is the value, and set selected Pokemon ID, that's the function. We have uh, rendered that out at the, in our component uh, right here, selected Pokemon ID is four right now, because I clicked around. Uh, it would start at one, obviously. Now, uh, we created a new API on our Pokemon list so that like on uh, on select, when an item is selected, we give it a function to call, which takes an ID and calls this function with that ID to update it. We then went into our component and we said, hey, when these list items are clicked, call this on select function, or we give it a function that calls on select. And, uh, and then we did some kind of, kind of nastiness to uh, get a usable ID. I know that's a lot of steps, um, and I hope that we can kind of clean up a little, clean up a few of these. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add some selection here, so um, you get a little affordance to see which item on the list is selected, um, not just by the number, um, and we will tackle that next. Now, about next, um, I have had a ton of questions come up over these last seven days. Um, so in order to give your inbox a rest, I was thinking that I would take a little bit of a, a break just for two days, just over the weekend, um, and I would just do kind of a question and answer answer thing in a video format. Um, the emails would pick up again on Monday, I'm actually diving back into where we're leaving the app right now. So if you have questions, please um, you know comment on this video, or uh, if you're on the email list, email me back with your questions, and I'll take those two days to just um, go through anything that might be um, a little confusing in this video format, which is a little bit easier than text. So have a great weekend. This is a great chance for you to get caught up if you haven't already. Um, I uh, appreciate you. I am super excited that you are learning hooks. I'm super excited for the next couple weeks. Um, we're really going to start to dive into some, um, some real live code and um, yeah. Have a great weekend. I'll uh, see you if you have questions on uh, tomorrow. And uh, if you don't, see you Monday.